Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Under Review. Today, we are going to break down two pretty big games. First, conference game, Villanova, and then a pretty hard non-conference battle on the road against Tennessee. Luckily, both wins, but we have on a pretty special guest, Maggie Vanoni from the CT Insider. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk with you. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, First, let's talk about the Tennessee rivalry. Coach Oyama said it was the first rivalry in women's basketball and the only rivalry when it first began. So many iconic moments in the pregame video. Rebecca Lobo, Diana Taurasi punching the back of the basket. Obviously, Pat Summit played a huge role in what this rivalry was. Do you think in this modern era, it is still a rivalry, especially with Tennessee not having won the rivalry since 2009? Yeah, I mean... It is, it's the women's basketball rivalry. And I think it's always going to be a rivalry, no matter what happens the next with the series. You know, long after Gino, long after Kelly Harper, you're still going to have these two programs of so much history and so much tension that it's always going to be heated. I mean, I, I can't remember the exact number, but Tennessee's home crowd on Thursday against UConn was its biggest home crowd since 2015. Like, that's huge. And that's because of UConn being in the building. And because of that, those two programs and their history, um, I think it's a lot healthier now. I think Gino mentioned that last week before the game that it's a lot, it's not as heated. It's not as like, like it's not as mean, I guess that's the word. Or just, yeah. it's, not as, it's not as heated tension. It's, there's still tension, but it's more healthy, right? Because of that time they didn't play. Um, and they haven't met in the championship game for a hot minute as well. Um, who's to say maybe they mean the championship again it gets more heated but I think right now it's at a really good spot and it's because it's kind of a celebration of the past right it shows just how much women's basketball how much both Tennessee and UConn have come since first playing each other in 95 um, so I think it'll always be a rivalry no matter what year no matter what stage of the season they play in um, there will always be tension between those two programs. <laughs> I definitely didn't expect as much tension but when we got to see that game, we see Coach Oyama fired up in that halftime uh, talk with Holly Rowe. He was expressing how frustrated he was with the officiating. Huskies had 33 points in the first quarter, just seven in the second. Do you think the officiating played a large role in the Tennessee's sudden lead in the second, or do you think there was a shift in the Huskies' performance? Yeah, I think it was a little bit of both. Um, a lot of those officiating calls were you know, questionable. <laughs> There's a lot of charge calls. And I think a lot of them also took at least a couple minutes to move on from, right? Like there was at least one play in the second quarter that was under review for what felt like five minutes, same with the third quarter. Um, so I think that combination of just having to stop and move on with the next play, having to give up the ball, and it wasn't just all one side of Tennessee or all one sided calls for UConn. It was both. Um, and I think also Tennessee saw what UConn was doing in that first quarter and responded to it in the second they knew that Nika was going to come down that Leah was going to screen and they were going to give the ball either to the inside or the outside like they knew exactly what they were doing and how to combat that and I think UConn trying to respond to Tennessee's response while also dealing with all this stoppage with all the file about all the fouls called kind of left them I don't want to say frustrated but maybe that's the right word of just like okay they were rushing now now we have to rush to get a play done now we have to do this like what do we do um, and I think Gino kind of expressed that, you know, that he he was so frustrated at halftime that he didn't know what was going on. He didn't know why the calls were being called so frequently. Um, that definitely just combined with them not scoring as much at all in the second quarter. Yeah, I think that sometimes the officiating gets into people's heads where it does actually affect their performance and then they're not able to play as well. Um, so I definitely think it was a mixture of both. But I think it got better in those third and fourth quarters as Coach Rama was in a lot better spirits towards the end of the game when speaking to Holly, but she she was definitely a little rattled up there. I I would have been thrown off guard. But Aaliyah Edwards was specifically taking a hit that game, getting pushed, pulled, even sat on, um, and she got a technical for that. How important was her composure and her ability to still get 25 points, even though you can tell Tennessee was specifically trying to shut her down? Yeah, I mean... Not even just that game, but Aaliyah's season has just been an All-American level, right? Like, she's playing at such a bigger level than she has these past two seasons. Um, she's just unlocked a whole new version of herself in her game. And I think she thrives a lot in these big moments against Tennessee, a big opponent against, you know, against a crowd that is booming constantly for them. 
Um, I think she, that's where she thrives. That's where she learns. She knows she has to do whatever she can for her team. She has to go after all the balls. She has to, she has to put herself in traffic, get physical. Like she knows what she needs to do. And I think that composure has really grown a lot since the beginning of the season to now um, against, you know, against Notre Dame, against Maryland. Like she's, she's been their most consistent dominant player this whole season. I think also, cause I always try to put her in that national player of the year conversation specifically because a lot of people watch her now, but seeing how much she's improved since last year, kind of going through that tough stretch in the beginning of the year where she couldn't really find her rhythm and then having to play with so many different lineups and now being able to be consistent. I think it kind of has to make her in that conversation just because of how much she's improved as a player. Totally. I mean, she was just named the Big East player of the week. Yeah. Um, so like she's, she's playing at, she's playing, she's a junior. Obviously that's an upperclassman, but she's playing like a senior. She's playing like every game matters. I think that's just, like you said, a huge, huge improvement. Mm-hmm. And then also we have now Lou Lopez Seneschal, someone who we, we weren't expecting on the lineup this year, but thank God we have her with the injuries we do. She had 26 points that game and you can hear coach Roy Emma saying, She's not going to get all American votes, but I don't know anyone who's been more important to their team in America than she's been to us. How do you believe she's revolutionized this team this season? I don't know if revolution rises the right word. I think maybe like re- rejuvenate is mm-hmm. the right word. Like she's just been a huge spark, right? And a fresh, I think Nika's called her a fresh breath of air in the beginning of the season when they first started playing with her. Because she's so new, she has just absorbed everything, right? And because she she wasn't like yeah, she was coming from Fairfield, but she was new to this level of basketball, this height, this stage, um, the UConn system, and she's just embraced it totally. And I, having her in that kind of Tennessee environment, you know, she just thrived. Like, she remained calm. She didn't let the noise get to her. And Gina even had a quote of how, like, sometimes when you play in those games for the first time, you don't, you don't, so you don't get soaked in and all the hype. You don't get soaked in and all the noise. You just play it like it's a normal game. Like, it's just another opponent in another crazy environment, but you don't, you don't like really take account of the history. And I think she's really good at that because she's so new that she can just play a game. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously she knows, she respects the history. She, you know, I'm sure she knows UConn and South Carolina have a history now. And I know she'll go into that game, you know, doing Lou. And that's what, you know, said is that Lou is Lou, right? Like she is very poised. She's very calm. And I think during the second season of all this injury chaos, they need someone like that. that can just come in and just, be themselves and not worry about all that stuff, not 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 lose their poise and just remain calm. I think that's definitely an interesting point, thinking that Lou feels so established, but she hasn't been a part of the South Carolina rivalry at all. And that might help her out as all these other players are coming with the tension of the last national championship and then losing the game before that. But she's just coming in kind of as a fresh player and hopefully she can do exactly what she's been doing so far. Um before injury, many probably expected Easy and Page to be the dominant guards on the court. Yet with time changing, Nika Mule has really stepped up, but not to fill in their scoring position. Having 14 assists against Tennessee and being the nation's assist leader, do you think she defies the standard of judging a player's success based off of only scoring? I mean, Nika, Nika Mule has become just such a strong point guard, right? And when you think about what makes strong point guards – you think about Sue Bird. You think about just selflessness. You think about putting the team above themselves. I mean, Sue Bird was never the WNBA MVP. She was never the leading scorer, and that was her role. And she did such incredible things, not having to score 20 plus points a game, right? She, it's in the same thing with Nika, right? Like she knows her players, she knows her teammates, she knows what passes they want, she knows where, where they want on the court, how they, where they want to shoot. She knows just everything about her teammates. You can tell her IQ, her basketball IQ has really improved. You can tell she's taking the time on the court to find the best play, the best option, instead of rushing the ball. You can tell that she's just matured a lot in her, like in her emotion control, what Gino called it last week against Tennessee. You know, she's not giving in and rushing. She's not giving in and getting flustered. Like she's really taking the time to find the best pass, to find the best player open, to know what how to move people on the court to get the best option. Um, and she doesn't need to score 10 points to 40 points a game. Like her, her impact is what she does off the stat sheet, right? It's her defense. It's her pressuring her opponents, getting in their faces. It's her passes that aren't, that aren't the assist, but just the passes that open up the court. Um, and I think that's the epitome of a point guard, right? Is to put the team above yourself and to know that whatever you do impacts the team. And that's the point of your role. 
I think she definitely has shifted the team's energy. You can tell when she's on the court and you can tell when she's not. She has such a leadership presence. Um, and you can see how that impacts the entire team. And regardless of her stat sheet, I feel like Coach Oriyama knows that her being on the court and her being off the court changes kind of how things are played. So I think she just has like a irreplaceable energy um, that kind of just sparks everyone. Um, and now seeing how she's moved from freshman year to junior year, I just couldn't imagine many games without Nico on the court. Yeah, and I think a lot of that, it was a forced kind of like, you have to grow up now kind of speech to her. Because, you know, last year she stepped in for Paige in 19 games. This year it's the whole season. And I think Gino and her really had that conversation of they need her to be better. They need her to be that leader. And she has taken that to heart and just completely become who she is now. It almost makes me wonder, as much as I didn't want any of these players to be injured, Paige, AZ, and Ice, it's almost given people a chance and a forced pressure to have to grow. And it makes you question if Nika Mule would be in this position or if certain people would be excelling if we had Paige on the court and AZ on the court at all times. Mm -hmm. But um, during the Villanova game, it seemed like last year's historic loss could be repeated. The Huskies down for a lot in the second half, and the fans standing until they score, where their knees almost gave out for six and a half minutes. Um, but they were able to secure the win in the end. What do you think was different about this game compared to last year's game at the Excel Center? Yeah, I think one of the biggest impacts of last year's game was having Olivia Nelson Odota be a last minute scratch. I mean, she literally sat down and not not in the lineup, I think right before the starting lineup was announced, right? So that's minutes before tip off. Um, to a, She had a groin injury. And I think, you know, losing your starting and center like that so last minute changes everything, right? The game plan now has to be it's changed. You know, yeah, you have Aaliyah, you had Dorcas still playing, Avina came in and started in place of, of, of Olivia, but like, it's not the same, right? Especially when you're going against Maddie Seacrest, who's one of the biggest power forwards in the league, in the nation. Um, and so I think having Olivia go out last minute kind of flustered UConn a little bit, what appeared, um, and they weren't just able to capitalize on that, capitalize on that. They were also coming off, you know, they had played Tennessee two games prior, I think, to open that Villanova game. So they might have been a little tired, whereas this year, they had, yeah, they had still played Tennessee right before that game, but they had played three other games within seven days, right? So they were, I think this year, you saw them really tired. And Gino even said, this is the first game you look really tired in. Um, and they did. You, know, you could tell that they they were going down the court at a little bit slower pace. They were exhausted. And there was just, he only played five of them the whole second half. And I think they're starting to really have to have to dig deep for that extra energy. I, with that limited bench, we see even just the five starters are really playing most of their minutes. Um, and the 40 minutes are starting to take a toll on them. He was even saying yesterday how that was the first game they felt really tired. Um, going into such a big battle against South Carolina, but even these conference games, how much of a factor do you think these long stretch to games and increasing exhaustion will play for UConn as the season continues, especially with the fact that you don't want any of these other players getting injured? Yeah, I think rest is going to be the most important factor moving forward. I think, you know, not just recovery days, but like days off your feet, right? Days off the basketball court. And I think there's such a, like I said, there's such a limited bench and not knowing AZ's return, not knowing Caroline's return, it really just, emphasizes health and it emphasizes recovery um and you you these players are playing 30 plus the starters are playing 30 plus minutes a game which is fine but not great you know you want them to get more rest you want them to be able to be fresh legs come south carolina come march madness um and that's whether that means you know during games like providence or a little bit more less challenging games in the big east having them sit for longer or maybe that means giving them more off days in between you know gino has said that they have changed practices the season because of the limited bench of go instead of going like two or three hours, they maybe go 45 minutes. They, you know, they go shorter amount in practice. So they're not really tiring their legs as much when they're not playing. Do you think that going into South Carolina, knowing that South Carolina knows that we only have eight players and we're mainly playing five to six, they are going to use this probably against us. Do you think that's going to be the biggest challenge or do you think there's other factors that are definitely going to challenge us in that game? I think it's one of 
one of the main factors. You know, South Carolina has a lot more death right now than UConn does. And so I think that's going to be one of them of how does Gino manage the bench, right? How does he give his players rest, especially going against Aaliyah Boston, especially going against, you know, their other guards, how or their guards, how is he going to make sure that Aaliyah, Aaliyah Edwards gets some time, Dorka gets some time, Lou gets some time, you know, yeah, they're all capable of playing 40 minutes, but that's not great against that kind of an opponent because what if it gets down to the wire? That's more time on their bodies. Um, so I, I think it'll be one of the opponents. Um, I think there's other things in that game that are going to challenge them for sure. But I think moving forward, especially after South Carolina, it's going to be all about rest. I think so too. I'm hoping that they can incorporate more into their lineup. And with Coach Royama saying that Caroline Ducharme could be back in maybe a number of games, even one more person would just allow a little bit more rest um, because they looked rather exhausted yesterday. But hopefully they can get some rest before Providence and then before the big South Carolina game. Um, It was a pleasure having you on. Um, Thank you so much for coming on. Hopefully you come on again soon. And thank you guys all for watching. UConn plays Providence this Wednesday um, at Providence. And then on Sunday, South Carolina travels to the XL Center where all of you should be at noon. Um, but until then, I'm Bremon. And you're... <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> I'm Maggie Benoni. Thanks for watching. <laughs>